Whether it be in books or comics, the recent canon has established that the relationship between Tarkin and Darth Vader in the early years of the Empire was openly hostile to say the least, with a clear animosity between them. As seen in the first meeting between Vader and Tarkin on Coruscant, their confrontation in the Citadel Tower on Scarif, and during Vader's choice to make an example of the Empire's highest ranking officers, violence could have easily erupted between the two, with Vader taking out his long-held hatred on Tarkin and likely killing the future Grand Moth. But in all of these examples, Sidious never allowed the situation to get that far. Although Tarkin worried for Palpatine's safety in the presence of Vader, he ordered Tarkin to leave. As Tarkin felt the rage rising in Vader to attack him, he contacted Palpatine, who informed his apprentice that Tarkin had full authority over him. And most importantly in my opinion, when Vader finally gets Sidious' blessing to make an example of five Imperial officers as a demonstration of Vader's power, Sidious, probably reading his apprentice's thoughts, specifically orders Vader to kill any officer he wants except for Tarkin, telling Vader he required him. In only the first few months of the Empire, Palpatine personally intervenes to protect Tarkin from Vader numerous times, and made it clear that Tarkin was a vital architect within the Empire. In this video expose, we'll look at why Sidious protected Tarkin from Vader in the early years of the Empire, and see exactly why Sidious remained completely loyal to Tarkin, even when events conflicted with Vader himself. Of course, we'll need to start from the beginning, from the very first meeting when Tarkin was a virtual nobody and Palpatine was a rising senator from Naboo. Early in his career, Tarkin joined the Outland Region Security Force, a paramilitary force created by his homeworld of Iriadu and its sector, to help protect against pirates and privateers who went uncontrolled by the Republic's judicial forces. Not even 20 years old, Tarkin earned a fearsome reputation. However, he would soon attend the Sullis Sector Spacefarers Academy, with the goal of serving the Republic in its Judicial Department. It was here at the Academy when Tarkin would first meet Senator Palpatine. In fact, the Senator sought him out, with the Clone War still roughly two decades away. The first face-to-face -face meeting between Tarkin and Palpatine is a telling one for why Tarkin would play such an important role in the Empire decades later. Tarkin immediately thanked Palpatine for legislation he supported that encouraged policing of free trade zones, an action that played into Tarkin's history of fighting pirates in the protection of his homeworld. Palpatine also seized upon the potential for Tarkin to show his hostility towards the Jedi Order. Noting that the Jedi did nothing to support his own Suswena sector against pirates, Tarkin concluded that the sector didn't rate highly enough on their list of priorities. Palpatine had seen enough and recognized in Tarkin the chance to mentor a rising protege. Tarkin shared Palpatine's contempt for disorder and chaos across the galaxy, and recognized that neither the Republic nor Jedi were capable of providing what was required to keep the galaxy safe. These were the seeds that proved to Palpatine Tarkin would be an ally against both the Republic and the Jedi Order. But it was also more than that. When Tarkin questioned why an already powerful senator knew who he was, Palpatine had no problem being honest, telling Tarkin he and a number of allies on Coruscant were impressed with Tarkin's skills in science, technology, and other similar fields. Most importantly, Palpatine told Tarkin he and his friends on Coruscant believed Tarkin's skills would be wasted in the Republic Judicial Department. It was clear that Tarkin was a young man of action and obvious ambition, who through his crime of not being born within the Core Worlds was marginalized with his options. Yet Palpatine knew Tarkin was a man born to lead, and offered to be his mentor on one condition. Tarkin eventually leave the Judicial Department and take up a path in galactic politics, where his true skills would shine through. Tarkin would use Palpatine's connections to enter the Judicial Department, but his mentorship clearly stayed with him as well. This first meeting went perfectly for Palpatine. With the Empire still decades away, he had a rising star attached to the Republic, who had all the qualities needed for an ally. Tarkin was ambitious with no real true attachment to the Republic or Jedi, but to an end to chaos, and knew both were ineffective in the modern age. Just as important, Tarkin showed remarkable talent in science and technology. With the coming loss of the Jedi, Palpatine knew both would form the backbone of his empire. 
Although it couldn't possibly be known during their first meeting, Tarkin skill would ultimately give rise to the Empire's Tarkin Initiative, and technological authority would replace the Jedi as the galaxy's guardian of peace and order. As important as this first meeting was, Palpatine's own background research on Tarkin proved he was the perfect candidate to help architect the coming Empire as his loyal ally. It was no accident that Palpatine found Tarkin. He and his allies kept an eye out for successful students with skills in science and technology, and gifts for politics. But Tarkin came into the purview of Palpatine for another reason. Given that he wasn't born into an influential family on an influential world, the cadet from Iriadu should have struggled to gain any notoriety. And yet Tarkin made a name for himself. This suggested that Tarkin didn't just have the needed ambition and skill, but there was also a bit of destiny connected to the rise of Tarkin and Palpatine. Neither of them were from influential worlds or families, as both Iriadu and Naboo had very little galactic significance. And yet here they were, rising through the ranks of the Republic. It couldn't be a coincidence that they should meet, and perhaps destined by the Force itself. This destiny was made even more powerful with the addition of Anakin Skywalker into Palpatine's plans, whose homeworld of Tatooine was also insignificant and outside of the core. For Palpatine, it couldn't simply be a coincidence that the three most important architects of the Empire were all from the same relatively insignificant slice of the galaxy. Together with Tarkin's obvious skills and successes, these additional details caused Palpatine to look favorably upon the Republic's rising star, believing their futures were intertwined. Palpatine's investigation into Tarkin's upbringing provided even more reasons to create an alliance. The Sith Lord was enamored with the fact that Tarkin completed his own family trials and rites of passage, which he told Vader was similar to the trials passed by all Sith and Jedi alike. As a teenager, Tarkin overcame the Carrion Plateau, the most dangerous terrain on his homeworld of Iriadu. He gained dominance over the harsh, unforgiving, and dangerous species and fauna of the plateau. Palpatine recognized Tarkin not only had invaluable survival, tactical, and strategic skills that made him a military mastermind, but that Tarkin understood the truth of the galaxy and how to overcome disorder and struggle. Therefore, it should be clear why Palpatine was so loyal to Tarkin by the time of the Empire, even protecting him from his own apprentice Vader. Tarkin was mentored by Palpatine long before Anakin was even brought into the Jedi Order. From day one, Palpatine knew Tarkin was to join him as a crucial Imperial Architect. Like himself, Tarkin was ambitious and a man of action, who overcame the position of his birth and passed trials before he entered the galactic stage. Tarkin's views on the Republic, the Jedi, leadership, and order match Palpatine's perfectly. The more Palpatine learned, the more it appeared the Force itself was behind their meeting and alliance. Palpatine couldn't have asked for someone better than Tarkin. It should also be mentioned that Tarkin earned his unique protection and loyalty from Palpatine as a long-trusted ally and friend. We've discussed it in a recent video, but Tarkin was fiercely loyal to Palpatine. When Tarkin grew disillusioned with the Judicial Department, he completely changed careers and entered the realm of politics at the suggestion of Palpatine, seeking the governorship of Iriadu. Palpatine was all too happy to assist Tarkin, recognizing it would be a play to reduce the authority of then-Supreme Chancellor Valorum. Two years before the Phantom Menace, Tarkin became governor of Iriadu. When Palpatine asked for Tarkin's help to weaken Valorum so he might rise to the Chancellorship, Tarkin stonewalled Valorum's attempts to investigate a disastrous trade summit that took place on Iriadu, thereby triggering the Naboo Crisis and Palpatine becoming Supreme Chancellor. Tarkin's loyalty wasn't only seen prior to the Clone War, but ten years later during the conflict itself. Although Iriadu had every reason to turn their back on the Republic, Tarkin stayed loyal to Palpatine, enlisting his homeworld on the side of the Republic during the war. Despite Dooku's repeated promises of substantial gain if Iriadu joined the Separatists, Tarkin remained loyal, never once considering allying against Palpatine. Just as important, it has to be mentioned that Palpatine's unique loyalty to Tarkin was also the result of the fact that Dark Lord was certain Tarkin puzzled out that Vader had once been Anakin Skywalker. Therefore, Tarkin could easily deduce Vader was a Sith, and Palpatine was a Sith Master. 
And yet, this secret never got out, nor did Tarkin ever bring up the question to either Palpatine or Vader, meaning these were facts Tarkin accepted and was happy to keep to himself. As had been the case for almost 30 years to that point, Tarkin could be trusted. By the time of the early years of the Empire, all of this added up to make Tarkin a valued and trusted ally for Palpatine. The Emperor had someone who earned his loyalty, and Palpatine was happy to reciprocate loyalty in kind. As we've seen, Tarkin's decades of skills, trials, proven loyalty, and possible destiny with Palpatine as ordained by the Force itself, earned Tarkin protection and loyalty from Palpatine. All those years of mentorship that built Tarkin into one of the leading architects of the Empire, and someone worth the praise of Palpatine himself, was too much to be wasted on a violent outburst from his emerging apprentice. Tarkin was the only one to be personally identified by Palpatine as safe from Vader's wrath, and for good reason. As Sidious told Vader, some were born for greatness and were larger than life, and Tarkin was one of them. Given the long history between Tarkin and Palpatine, wherein the former had long established himself as a necessary element for the Empire, it's not surprising to see the unique protection and loyalty he was granted by Sidious. So there we have it, why Sidious protected Tarkin from Vader and was so loyal to him. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions. Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. Or perhaps follow us on Twitter, at SWReadingClub, for updates regarding the channel. Or support the channel through Patreon, for access to exclusive rewards and discussions. If not for me... First Sad Endings